the shellborne header, we have a single point plate that we need to keep clean and maintained. Notice I'm using the electrical contact cleaner and I'm cleaning the header and the combine side. Also on a shellborne we have U-joints that have lubrication fittings on each end here. On the telescoping shaft, I'd highly recommend sliding apart and applying fresh grease to the telescoping part of the male and female of the shafts so it's not pulling on our reverser as we use the contour master through the field. On the shellborne header, the drive line is protected by a shear bolt system and one advice I would have for you is during engaging of this header, I would engage the header clutch before I engage the separator. That way the separator and the header are engaged together and that makes it a much more smooth engagement and prevents shearing the shear bolt while you're engaging the header. The shear bolt storage location is on the left hand inside panel. On the Shellborne header rotor drive gear case we have an oil level to maintain with the header sitting in the ground. It's a special synthetic 7590 oil that I'd highly recommend staying with and if we had to top it off we could add some right here but keeping it in this sight glass is critical to the life of this gear case. On the rotor drive variable speed drive belt we have a thrust bearing within this shiv assembly here that we need to maintain and I would highly recommend a couple shots of grease daily. I'd recommend checking the auger for foreign objects daily. There is a hold down latch on the left and on the right as you can see and then we simply take this hydraulic pump and we lift the hood to check the condition of our auger. On the left hand end of the header we have auger drive chain tension to maintain and then we also have a cam assembly down here that holds the tension with the spring posi torque drive system on the drive belt itself. As you can see here in the middle we have a zerk that needs a little bit of grease daily and also we have our bearings for the cam assembly to maintain grease in them. There's one on that side, one on this side and I'd highly recommend, although you might run it at one speed through the harvest day, to go ahead and run it through a paste to get fresh grease applied to the, har to the cams and to the thrust bearing here at the top shiv that we talked about earlier. Also behind this shiv we have a rotor bearing with a lubrication fitting on it. Maintaining belt tension on the Shellborne rotor drive belt if we were to slow it all the way down, we need 3 and 3 eighths on the outside to outside measurement of the shivs at the bottom end. And if it was too, if it was not 3 and 3 eighths, if it was under that, then we would have to slide this idler down to pull the belt down into the shiv farther. Or if it was too wide, we would need to go ahead and, and let the belt tension off so we would bring it back into specifications. Also, we want to use a high temperature synthetic grease during our lubrication of this cam assembly down here. One item I'd like to bring your attention to is if I've changed tire sizes on my combine, adjusted my rear axle, or uh, done some adjustments to the skid shoes of the Shelbourne stripper header, it's critical that we maintain five to six inches from the tip of this rotor finger to the ground and we do that by adjusting the skid shoes underneath the auger floor of the header to prevent rotor damage while we're harvesting. During our service of this header, there is a coupler in the middle of this header between the two rotors that we need to maintain grease in the ball coupling. As you can see, I've removed a rubber plug and there is a lubrication fitting on the right hand side of the rotor at the center. If I had a few stainless steel fingers that were bent like this because I hit an object in the field or uh, was maybe harvesting in some old soybean or, or corn stubble and hooked a finger. Don't hesitate just to bend it up by using a pliers and straightening it out. Then that backer sheet that's behind here with the hot summer sun will go ahead and come back to a relaxed position and support that stainless steel finger. Also if I had a shellborn header that had what we call snake tongue where the crop is always hitting here and then finding its way around and I had it in the middle there where it was getting a pretty deep groove, that can cause uh, shatter loss or pre-threshing ahead of where the hood can catch it. 
and I'd want to start looking at replacing my stainless steel fingers. So often we get a question of how do I know when my stripper fingers, stainless steel fingers are wore out. If a nickel fits through that hole at any point, then we know that we've got a large enough hole or we've got wear back to our main rotor shield that we've got this egg shaped out enough that that will be harvesting crop against here we need to look at replacing. The main goal of the stripper header is to harvest the crop back here so it's at the center of the rotor as it lifts the crop and throws it to the auger underneath the hood it keeps that crop close to the rotor and throwing it into the auger preventing losses.